In this video, we'll look at how cabinet materials work. You can apply the materials in 3D or through the cabinets dialog on the materials panel. Let's begin with the first method in 3D, which is probably the easiest and most visual way to change your materials. From this 3D view, let's walk through the different ways you can apply your materials to your cabinets. The first way is to use the material eyedropper where you can find a cabinet with the color you like, transfer that to another cabinet. You'll find the tool for the material eyedropper in your menu system. You can click on this tool, come down, click on the cabinet you like. Notice my cursor changes to a spray can. Move over to the cabinet you want to apply it to, and it will transfer all of the colors onto that cabinet box. The object eyedropper and material painter use what's called scoping. You'll find these scoping tools in the lower left hand menu. C for component which is the individual door and drawer. If I apply that onto the cabinet, notice the side of the box and the kick panel have not changed colors. That's component mode. Object is the entire cabinet. Room would be the entire room. Any material that's being used would be replaced by the material you are applying. And then floor and plan would apply it to the entire floor or the entire plan. You can also use these tools as we look at the scoping for applying the materials directly out of the library. If you move over and you take a look at the library and we come down and we grab a color, let's go ahead and grab a neutral color, apply it to the front of the drawers. Notice that it switched out the colors even though I'm in object mode just for the like materials which were applied to the door and drawer. If I click on the side of the cabinet, it will replace all of the colors or materials on that cabinet that are like with the one that you're using. Now you're going to notice that my cursor is currently a spray can. The material painter works with a solid paint, which is a spray can, or in a blend mode, which is using the paint roller. So if I switch it over to the paint roller, and click on the far left cabinet, you can still see the wood grain through and it's more of a blending color with the material. It allows you to still see that wood grain through the material when you're in the blend mode. You can easily toggle this on and off and notice your cursor will change to either a spray can when it's in solid body mode or when you're in blend mode in the blend mode. And again, each one of these tools work the same using the component, the object, room, floor, and plan with those scoping tools. If you're using a cabinet manufacturer, many of these manufacturers, if you've downloaded their catalog, have their colors and wood species available. Let me scroll down and find one of our manufacturers and let's take a look at the process of first looking at what their wood species or wood types are. Once you find the material or wood species that you're after, you can use the material painter and apply this. Again, this is going to be scoped. So if you want to apply it to the entire object, make sure you're in object mode and then you can click on the cabinet and it will apply that material. Typically it's good practice to first apply the wood species and then apply the color or the stain over the top of it. For this cabinet manufacturer, they also have their finishes available. If we come down and take a look at their stains, you can see the various stains that are available. And if we come down and click on one of these, the first thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that I'm in the stain mode. You can verify that. My cursor is in the paint roller or stain mode. Again, you'll find that toggle down here that switches it stain and paint mode. And then in object mode, I can click on that and apply it to the entire box. So it's a pretty easy process to find the material and then stain it to the box using that approach. You can customize your colors. Even though this is a manufactured color, let me show you the process of how to customize this color. If you have a photograph, and I'll just bring one over on the side of my screen, of a particular color, you can adjust the materials using this color swatch. Let's take a look at the process of how this works. I'm going to slide this over onto my second monitor. Using the adjust material definition tool, 
It's the picture of a rainbow as I kind of hover over this. It's called Adjust Material Definition. Let's come down and click on the unfinished color that we were using from the manufacturer. And I'm going to come up here and select the color. And at this point, this will bring up a color selector. I'm using a PC. It looks very close on a Mac, but slightly different. In here is the eyedropper tool that I can actually click on and then move anywhere on the screen that I want. And you can kind of see that my color adjuster is changing over here as I move this around. Now I'm going to slide this over to my other monitor, that color swatch. And I'm just going to grab the brown color off of there. You can adjust the tone up or down, depending on what you want. And now I can create a custom color using this brown. And then the next thing I want to do is make sure on the texture panel that it's marked to be blend with texture. That way it will actually still allow the wood grain to bleed through that stain. And once you've done that, you've created a custom color over the top of it. Maybe a very quick way if your client has a picture or photo that would be appropriate for that design process. The Adjust Material Definition tool will also allow you to change the direction of materials. If we come down to the cabinet and we look at the countertop wood grain on here and we click on the Adjust Material Definition tool, the texture refers to the image. The pattern is more in a vector view. A lot of times if I'm going to make a change here, you can see the hardwood has a strip pattern and then the texture and the pattern are marked to be in sync. If I make a change on here, let's go ahead and change the angle to be at 45 degrees. I'll press the tab key and you can get a preview of what that looks like. And then when you close the dialog, you can see the way that looks in your 3D view. The adjust material definition allows you to change patterns and textures in the same way. If we just click on the flooring in this material and on the texture panel we change the angle to be 90 degrees, you can see that that quickly changes that flooring. So the adjust material definition tool allows you to make those changes not only to the color but also to the patterns and textures. Another way you can apply your materials to your cabinets is through the cabinet dialog. If I come up and open up the wall cabinet, in the cabinet dialog you'll find a panel for materials. This gives you a detailed list of all of the components that you can change, beginning at the backsplash all the way down to the hardware that is being used on the cabinet. For the cabinet interior, if I want to make a change in this case, let's go in and use the select material. And it gives you two choices. You can either search for the materials in the library or if you want to select a material that's already being used in the plan, you can select on the plan materials, come down and select the material. If I kind of scroll down and look for the oak material that we've been using, there's a few different options since we've been staining it. We grab a little bit lighter color and then we can apply that. You can see the preview of it over here and how it looks like in the preview panel. And then when you close it, you can see the change is applied to the interior of the cabinet box. All of the materials that you see can be changed this way. So if you want a detailed approach, you can open up the cabinet dialog and make those changes. In your design process, if you've determined the type and color of the cabinet you'd like to use, you can place your cabinet, and let's assume that I like this cabinet on the end for the design and I'm going to use that for the rest of the project. I'm going to take this cabinet, click on it. In the lower edit menu there is a tool called set as default. When you set this as your default cabinet, the program will notify you that your cabinet defaults have been updated and then when you place a brand new base cabinet it will look identical to the cabinet that you were just set as your default. You can also save that in your template plan. So as you begin new projects, you can always have that combination in your template plan when you begin a new project. If you're looking to create a few options for your client, you can use what's called a style palette in the program and quickly apply those style palettes. 
I'm going to scroll down. I've saved a couple in my library in the style palettes. I'm going to come over and I'm going to click on option number one. The style palettes have the material properties for your cabinets, your rooms, your doors, and your windows. And again, it also has scoping. So if I switch this over to the room mode, let's zoom out just a little bit and click inside the room. It very quickly applies that option into that room with a single application. You can learn more about style palettes by watching the specific video on using that. These are the different methods you can use to apply your cabinet materials. Have fun creating your design and thanks for watching the video.